ball is dropped from a height of 1.25 meters and falls and hits the ground. It bounces back up to a new height of 0 0.50 meters. So we will assume that there's some energy loss when it collides with the ground. Our job in this question here is to find out how much thermal energy is lost when it bounces and what impulse the ball receives when it hits the ground. Okay, well, let's see what kind of energies we have. Okay, we're at max height here and we do drop. Okay, before anything moves, we have gravitational potential energy. And that's all we got. Now, of course, there is a conversion to kinetic energy as it's going down, and then when it hits the ground, it'll have elastic potential energy and thermal. But on the way back up, it'll have kinetic energy, and then finally ending up at gravitational potential energy, too. Nice thing about this is there's lots of transitions that occur from position one to position two, but we only need to consider the final condition here and the beginning condition here in order to determine how much thermal energy is lost. The thermal energy then really should equal the change in gravitational potential energy. Now I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to take this one as uh, the first one and I'm going to subtract this one from it. That way I get a positive number. So I'm going to take 0 0.150 times 9.8 multiplied by 1.25 minus 0 0.150 times 9.8 times 0 0.50. And our change in gravitational potential energy or thermal energy loss is then going to equal 1.1 joules. So again, a very complicated situation in terms of conversions, but an easy way to determine the thermal energy loss because our gravitational potential energy only depends on position. Okay, now what about impulse? Well, let's remind ourselves, impulse, I, is change in momentum. That's mass times V2 minus V1. So mass times change in velocity. Okay, well, we need to figure out then what the velocity was here and what the velocity was right after the bounce. So we'll call this one V1. Okay, and V1 is the instant just before it collides a velocity. And V2 would be after the bounce. We need to remember to set V1 equal to a negative value then. Well, essentially, we have a gravitational potential energy conversion to kinetic energy based on height. So we can just do MGH equals one-half mv squared. And of course, masses will cross off. And then our velocity then is equal to the square root of 2gh. We would also get that using the fat 5. So let's do that. Well, we need to do it two times. So velocity 1 is going to equal then the square root of 2 times 9.8 times the height of 1.25. I'll need to make that negative because it's going downward. Velocity 1 is negative 4.95 meters per second. Let's do the same for V2. Velocity 2 would equal the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.5. Now in this case, we're trying to figure out what velocity would have been made 0.5 and max height is kind of what we're saying there. And velocity 2 is equal to 3.13 meters per second. Okay, let's go back up to this equation and uh, calculate the impulse. Impulse is then going to equal the mass, which is 0.15, multiplied by the velocity 2, 3.13. And I'm going to do minus a minus, and that's going to make that a positive 4.95. Okay, and again, I'm subtracting a negative, that makes it a plus. So the impulse then is equal to 1.2, and the units would be kilogram meter per second. Since impulse is a change in momentum, we expect it to have momentum units of mass times velocity.